I am fine. I understand. Don't you love me? <laughs> Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon and welcome to this service to remember and to celebrate the life of Ethel Knievel. I'm honored and I'm humbled to be given this privilege to speak today, sharing with family and friends, and certainly I want to say thank you to all of you for being here. It seems to me there are some stark contrasts that are in play today. On one hand, there's the relief that Ethel's pain and discomfort are over. The emotional pain of a doctor's diagnosis that the end is at hand at any moment has been eliminated. On the other hand, there's the pain of knowing someone who was so special to so many as run her race here on earth. There's the grief that gnaws at our very core today, but I remind you that that validates the very fact that we've lost someone that we love dearly. Eva was dearly loved, but she also dearly loved the Lord, and she loved the Lord's word, and she loved family dearly. She loved you with all of her heart. I loved all of her friends. And the vast majority of scriptures that I'll share with you today are those that Ethel chose herself and requested. We're here today to support and encourage each other and to be reminded of what's really important. The Apostle Paul put it this way in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Brothers and sisters, we do not want you to be uninformed about those who sleep in death so that you do not grieve like the rest of mankind who have no hope. For we believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. And in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, so that whether we are awake or are asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as in fact you are doing. And we also need to be reminded of what Jesus said. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Let's give thanks for that blessing of comfort and prayer together, shall we? Father God, we seek your presence and the comfort that you alone are able to provide. Help us to feel close to you today and every day, and therefore close to each other. For we know that in all things you, Lord, work for the good of those who love you. Grant us this day an attitude of thanksgiving as we celebrate the blessing Ethel was and how blessed we are in spite of our loss. Lord, please let her request that your peace which exceeds our ability to understand, will guide our thoughts and footsteps, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. We come before you confident of your presence and grace, and do so in Jesus' name. Amen. Any stars in my crown? 
I think it can be strongly argued that unless you're prepared to die, you're really not ready to live. In Psalm 90, verse 12, Moses prays to God, Teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Moses' request to God was that we would understand that life is limited and that our priorities and our concerns should reflect that so that on life's final day, we can look back and be thankful for what our life has stood for. I think Ethel understood completely what Moses was saying. Her faithfulness, gentleness, and kindness showed her heart of wisdom to all of us every day. She cherished her role as a daughter, a sister, a wife, mother, and grandmother. And she was able to do that in large part because the Lord was her shepherd. David's words in the 23rd Psalm fueled Ethel's heart of wisdom. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. There are lots of people that recognize that the Lord is a shepherd, and lots of people know that he is the shepherd. But what's really important is to be able to say, without any doubt, what Ethel would say so often, the Lord is my shepherd. And then with complete confidence, like her, we can say, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. And like David declare, I shall not want, I shall not fear, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Helen Steiner Rice captured the essence of a mother's love. I'd like to say of Ethel's love today, in a poem that's simply titled, A Mother's Love. A mother's love is something that no one can explain. It's made of deep devotion, of sacrifice and pain. It is endless and unselfish and enduring come what may, for nothing can destroy it or take that love away. It is patient and forgiving when all others are forsaking. And it never fails or falters, even though the heart is breaking. It believes beyond believing when the world around condemns, and it glows with all the beauty of the rarest, brightest gems. It is far beyond defining, it defies all explanation, and it still remains a secret, like the mysteries of creation. A many splendid miracle man cannot understand another wondrous evidence of God's tender, guiding hand. Memories, I think, also are a wondrous evidence of God's tender, guiding hand and blessing. And so now I'd like to invite Ethel's son, Mark, to come forward and share. Mark. I was asked if I'd like to say a few words. And the obvious reaction would be, why not? Of course, it's your mother. And then it hits you, what am I going to say? How do you express what your mother has meant to all of us? And this may seem really strange, but the one thing she didn't like was her middle name so much. It started with the letter C. The middle name, as you can see, was Charlotte. She didn't like that, but as I thought about what I was going to say and thinking about all the things she loved, they all, a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them started with C. <laughs> so I made a list and I just had to go through a few of the things she liked, what she enjoyed, and what 
made up our mother. Um, she enjoyed cooking for children. Well, most of the time. <laughs> Caring for her other children, the daycare that she had for so long. Cardinals. She liked the Cardinals. And then she had children of the grandest type. Consideration for others. Camping. Lots of camping. Cardinals. <laughs> and then, of course, great great grandchildren. Card playing. And she loved it when company or friends would come through the back door into the house and just come in to visit. Being a church lady when she was able, and part of the circle, and cardinals. <laughs> Her commitment to others. She was always there for us and a lot of other people. Cookie jars, lots and lots and lots of cookie jars. Kindness. It starts with a K, but it's got C sounds. <laughs> Castle Rock Lake on the weekends. Her compassion for others. Calendars. Oh, you guessed it. Cardinals. <laughs> and candy. Hence, the candy dish as you came in. And maybe, Mom, that's why you were so sweet. She loved her candy, cookies, cake donuts, go on and on. Um, the mom was confident, like her aunt said. She raised you know, two pretty good guys, and then me, her sons, and then me. And mom, all I want to say is you will be missed very, very much. We love you, and we know we are glad. And once again, you were alongside the Lord and alongside Dad. Thanks for the many, many memories. Until we meet again, I, we, love you.
you, Mark. A lot of C's, but I'm going to give you an A. <laughs> I think you captured a lot of your mom in just a few words. I mentioned that Ethel gave me several scriptures to use today, but one that she didn't mention, I think, deserves to be used. And those are verses from Proverbs 31, beginning with verse 10. It's a section that's described as a wife of noble character. Hear the words and see if they don't describe Ethel well. A wife of noble character. Who can find? She is worth far more than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. She brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. <coughs> she selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She is like the merchant ships, bringing her food from afar. She gets up while it is still night. She provides food for her family and portions for her female servants. She considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings she plants a vineyard. She sets about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for the tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable, and her lamp does not go out at night. In her hand she holds the distaff and grasps the spindle with her fingers. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. When it snows, she has no fear for her household, for they are all clothed in scarlet. She makes coverings for her bed. She is clothed in fine linen and purple. Her husband is respected at the city gate, where he takes his seat among the elders of the land. She makes linen garments and sells them, and supplies the merchants with sashes. She is clothed with strength and dignity. She can laugh at the days to come. She speaks with wisdom, and faithful instruction is on her tongue. She watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Her children arise and call her blessed, her husband also, and he praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive, and beauty is fleeting, but you surpass them all. A woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done, and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. In all likelihood, I suspect that Ethel would be a bit embarrassed to receive such praise publicly. But that was a part of her humility. Humility that made all of her other attributes even more significant, including her sincerity. She truly had the fruit of the Spirit that grew from her love for the Lord. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. But later, as I thought about my conversations with Ethel, knowing how much her life mirrored the fruit of the Spirit, she also found herself dealing with some of life's most difficult challenges. And among those were grief and sadness. And I assure you, as much as she loved all of you, loved you dearly, family and friends, and as much as all of you brought her pride and joy and happiness, life without Virgil meant living without a peace that was really, really important. And truth be told, the passing of her beloved sisters, Mary May and Marjorie, in a little more than a month, just a few months ago, was a heartbreaking loss. So today, we find another sharp contrast. Ethel's love for all of you, and her desire to share life in every moment with you, and her incredible desire to be reunited with her husband, her sisters, and her parents. And that I think more than anything else, is why Ethel left me these words to encourage and to challenge you with today. My children, be not sorrowful that I am gone and my earthly life is done. Be not sad I passed away, for in you, my children, I live each day. There is a little of me in all of you, and each new one I live anew. So you see, I'll never really be gone 
as long as there are children to carry on. I have had my share of love, sorrow, and strife. I have lived a full and fruitful life. So do not mourn and do not weep, for I have earned this peaceful suit. And if tomorrow starts without me, then I'm not there to see. If the sun should rise and find your eyes all filled with tears for me, I wish so much you wouldn't cry the way you did today while thinking of the many things we didn't get to say. I know how much you love me, as much as I love you, and each time you think of me, I know you'll miss me too. But when tomorrow starts without me, please try to understand that an angel came and called my name and took me by the hand. Love, Mom, and Grandma. sadness we feel, we can find comfort in the promise of eternity with Jesus. The service for Ethel is a time to honor and to mourn a life that has been lost, a life that's meant a very great deal to many people, a life that was inspiring to others. And it's also a time to celebrate the hope of her reunion with loved ones in eternity and the incredible hope and peace that brings. Jesus assures us, when we've chosen him, as Ethel did, as Lord and Savior, that heaven is our true home. And remember the words from the 23rd Psalm, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Jesus promises this in scripture that was incredibly important to what Ethel wanted for today. And that's from the 14th chapter of John, beginning with the first verse. There Jesus says, 
Do not let your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know, and you know the way. These verses remind all of us that our stay here on earth is for a limited time only, and that there's a reunion in heaven that's guaranteed for believers when our lives here on this earth come to an end. Jesus is saying that the place for us that's perfect peace and joy is absent of pain and absent of suffering. And that description is a far cry from what we face here on earth. And this place that Jesus describes, it's not a rest stop or a place to pause, rest, and recover. It's a final destination for all of eternity. In my Father's house are many mansions. There's no question about that. But the question is, how do I get there? And that question is asked by Thomas, one of the Lord's disciples, in verse 5. Thomas said to him, being Jesus, Lord, we do not know where you're going, and how can we know the way? And the answer given to Thomas by Jesus is the answer that he gives to all of us today and every day. And Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So when you know Jesus, like Ethel did, you know the way, and he's the only way. Well, Jesus starts by saying, let your hearts not be troubled, and he ends this section by saying, I am the way. Knowing Jesus is the way, the only way, is the only way that we can have a heart that isn't troubled. And that doesn't mean that accepting Jesus is simply a pass to be able to walk on easy street, but rather as we walk the challenging path that this life so often provides with its troubles and difficulties, we have our sights set on a greater goal made possible by the words and the life and the death and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I truly believe our hearts can be filled with sadness, but not troubled. A troubled heart is burdened by conflict and problems, but a sad heart, a grieving heart, is one created by the loss of someone that we love, and someone who loved us. And that, friends, is a heart that will heal. Jesus promised to never abandon us or leave us alone to grieve. He understands. Jesus gives us refuge and a place of comfort during the most difficult times in life, times like today. And as much as it hurts, through him, we're able to find joy and thanksgiving and strength in the midst of sadness. As Jesus extends us grace and mercy, we have the opportunity, and I would like to say the obligation, to do the same. We can find great comfort in the love and support of those around us. We can help each other in this. And as you look around today, any day, you'll see people every day who would benefit greatly from the kindness that you can provide. We can be a source of love and comfort, of reassurance and resilience, of hope and trust. We need one another, today, tomorrow, and every day. And most of all, we need to remember our ultimate source of comfort during times of loss is the Lord and his promise of eternity for all those who claim the Lord Jesus Christ as their Savior. May the memory of Ethel Canaan remain forever and be richly blessed. This concludes our service today. I'd ask you to please remain seated until you are dismissed by the staff of the Pratt Funeral and Cremation Service. 
We will be leaving immediately for the graveside service at the Richland Center Cemetery. You are welcome to attend the graveside service at the cemetery, which will be brief. Once the graveside service is complete, we'll return to the Pratt Community Hall, which is right next door, to be able to share a meal together. Ethel's family hopes that you'll stay for the meal, that you'll reconnect, that you'll reminisce, and you'll remember. If you are going to the cemetery, please proceed to your vehicle immediately upon your dismissal to join the funeral procession. And let me say it's going to be very important for all of us to stay in that procession and follow the lead vehicle. Because of the construction in the city on 8th Street and in the area of the cemetery, we'll be going in what will seem like a funny direction but we're going to wind up in the right spot, and it's really the only way we can manage the traffic once we get there. So if you're going to the cemetery, then please be a part of the procession and follow, and we'll do the best we can in spite of the circumstances with the construction near the cemetery. Now, if you prefer not to go to the cemetery, that's absolutely fine. But you're certainly welcome and encouraged to stay for the meal. Simply go to the Pratt Hall and, and wait and visit, and as soon as the family returns, we'll say grace and then all enjoy the meal together. Let me, on behalf of Ethel's family, say thank you for attending. What a wonderful crowd today. I don't think there's a better tribute to Ethel Knievel than all of you gathered here to pay tribute to her name. Again, I'd ask you to please remain seated until you've been dismissed. Your attendance here today clearly helps fulfill what the Apostle Paul taught. Encourage one another and build each other up, in fact, just as you are doing. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, help us to recognize how short life is, that we might spend our energy on the things that really, truly matter. Help us to define and maintain priorities that allow us to live lives that honor you and bring joy and goodwill to others. Lord, today we lift Ethel's family before you, seeking for them a blessing of comfort and mercy. Please grant them the strength to face each new day, and to do so remembering the great blessing Ethel was as a daughter, sister, wife, mother, and grandmother. Might Ethel truly live on through their efforts to love each other and to love you. Grant them the power to retain their best memories, that they might recall them often. Thank you, Lord, for the gift of family and friends. You surround us on our difficult days and share our joy on our best days. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. And now accept this benediction from Philippians chapter 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be apparent to all. The Lord is near. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Go in peace.